Get your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free. Sage 50's inventory features track the goods and services your company purchases and sells. As you make inventory related transactions, Sage 50 posts the information to the general ledger and adjusts the quantities and costs of the goods accordingly. The first step in this process is to add the items you need to track into Sage 50. As you add items, you can change the default information that you entered in the inventory item defaults as needed. To add inventory items, select Maintain Inventory Items from the menu bar to open the Maintain Inventory Items window. There are up to six tabs in this window into which you enter information. General, Custom Fields, History, Bill of Materials, Item Attributes, and Serial Numbers. The Serial Numbers tab is only available in Sage 50 Premium Accounting or higher. To inactivate an existing item, select its ID from the Item ID field. Check the Inactive checkbox, and then click the Save button in the toolbar. To create a new item, click the New button in the toolbar if needed, then enter the Item ID into the Item ID field. Then enter an item description into the description field. To mark an item as being subject to commission, check the Subject to Commission checkbox. Then select an item class from the Item Class dropdown. Every item falls into one of the item classes. Item classes define the type of item you are creating. Item classes determine how an item's costing information is recorded. After saving an item as an item class, you cannot change the item class. Let's look at the different item classes you can select in the Maintain Inventory Items screen. First you have Stock Items. You use this class to track traditional inventory items. This tracks the quantity, average cost, vendors, stock reorder point, and quantity on hand. The Master Stock Item class is a special class of stock item that contains attribute information about several types of substock items contained within it. You use this item to maintain the substock items as you cannot directly change substock items. Serialized stock items are only available in Sage 50 Premium Accounting and higher. You use this class to track inventory items that use serial numbers for identification. This tracks the quantity, average cost, vendors, stock reorder point, and quantity on hand. You can also track warranty and recall information for these items. The non-stock item class is used for items you sell but don't place into inventory. It doesn't track the quantity on hand for these items. There is no costing method. The description only class is used for line item comments in an invoice. Nothing is tracked. The service item class is used to represent services you apply to your salary and wages account. This is useful for services provided by your employees and you can enter a cost for the service. The Labor class is used to represent labor that you apply to your salary and wages account. This is useful for labor provided by subcontractors and you can enter a cost for the labor. The Assembly Item class is used for package or combination items in your inventory that can be assembled or disassembled from other items in your inventory. The Serialized Assembly class is only available in Sage 50 Premium Accounting and higher. You use this class to track package or combination items that use serial numbers for identification and which can also be assembled or disassembled from other items in your inventory. The Activity Item class is used to indicate how time is spent when performing services for a customer. This is used in employee or vendor time tickets when you plan on billing customers for activities performed by employees or vendors like subcontractors. And finally, the Charge Item class is used to identify reimbursable charges incurred when performing services for a customer. These are used in employee or vendor time tickets when you plan on billing customers for reimbursable expenses. On the General tab, enter the item's general information. Depending on the item class, some fields may not be available on the General tab. You also enter the beginning balances for inventory on this tab. In the Description drop-down field, you select either For Sales or For Purchases. You can enter two descriptions per item, one which appears in the Sales forms and one which appears in the Purchase forms. 
enter the sales price into the price level 1 field. For stock and assembly items, enter the last purchase price paid for the item into the last unit cost field. Once a beginning balance or transaction is entered using this item, this field is then updated by Sage 50. For non-stock, service and labor items, enter the cost of sales amount that should be posted when the item is sold. Next, select one of the three available costing methods from the drop-down list of choices, FIFO, LIFO, or AVERAGE. This cannot be changed after the item has been saved. It is only available, however, for stock and assembly items. Continue by entering the UPC or SKU code for the item. If needed, enter a part number into the part number field. Then enter or select an item type of your choosing. This is used for filtering reports. You can enter a description of the item's physical location into the location field. Then enter how the item is sold in the stocking or unit of measure field. This is optional as it is never used in calculations. You can also enter a weight for the item, and weight totals can be printed on reports providing you use the same unit of measurement for each item. Next, enter the income account that is credited when the item is sold into the GL Sales Account field. Enter the inventory account that is debited when the item is bought and credited when it is sold into the GL Inventory Account field. Then enter the expense account that is credited when a non-stock item is sold in the GL Salary and Wages account field. This account is reduced and the cost of sales account is increased when a non-stock item is sold. Then enter the cost of goods account that is debited when the item is sold in the GL Cost of Sales account field. Assign the item an item tax type. Finally, enter the minimum stock number into the field of the same name. This is the quantity at which you reorder stock. It is only used for stock and assembly items. Also enter the reorder quantity, which is the number of items usually purchased when the minimum stock level is reached. Also specify the item's preferred vendor in the preferred vendor ID field. If you have a buyer, you can specify the employee ID of the buyer in the buyer ID field. To enter beginning balances for your items, if you are setting up your company and had inventory as of the start date of the company file, click the beginning balances arrow. Entering the beginning balances for inventory items is discussed in a later lesson. To enter custom field values, click the custom fields tab. Then enter any information for this item into the fields you created when you entered the item defaults in the inventory item defaults window. To view an item's sales and cost history, click the history tab. You can't make changes on this tab, but it shows useful information. It displays the period history date and, for that date, the number of units sold, dollar sales, number of units received, and the total cost for the item. If creating a new item of the Assembly Item class, click the Bill of Materials tab. If the item you are creating is not of the Assembly Item class, then skip this tab. An assembly is a group of products you sell as a unit. To create an assembly item, you must select the required component items and enter the quantity needed of each on the Bill of Materials tab. To print the items that make up an assembly as separate line items in invoices, check the Print Components on Invoice checkbox. Next, select the item ID of the first item used in the assembly. You can select any stock, non-stock, description, assembly, labor, or service item. Then enter a short description of the item for reference in the description field. Then enter the quantity needed of the item to build the assembly. You can also use the Add and Remove button at the right of this tab to add and remove item components for an assembly item. Make sure you enter all the items needed for the assembly. If creating a new item of the Master Stock Item Item class, then click the Item Attributes tab. For all other types of item classes, skip this tab as it is unavailable. On this tab, you set the primary attributes and the secondary attributes for the master stock item. These attributes can include any attribute you need, like size, style, and color, for example. As you set the attributes, Sage 50 will automatically create substock items of every possible combination between your primary and secondary attributes. Under the Primary Attributes section, enter the name of the primary attribute 
then give the first specific instance of the attribute an ID by typing it into the ID field. Type the description of the specific instance into the description field and then click the Add button to add the attribute to the list of primary attributes. Repeat this process until you have added all the primary attributes to the list. To remove a primary attribute, select an attribute in this list and then click the Remove button. Under the Secondary Attribute section, enter the name of the secondary attribute. Then give the first specific instance of the secondary attribute an ID code in the ID field. Type a description of the specific instance into the description field. Then click the Add button to add the attribute to the list of secondary attributes. Repeat this process until you've entered all the secondary attributes. You can also select a secondary attribute within this list and then click the adjacent Remove button to remove it. Saving a master stock item generates every possible combination of primary and secondary attributes as separate stock items, which are called substock. These items appear within the created substock items list. The item ID of substock is the combination of the ID code for the master item plus the ID codes of the primary and secondary attributes. You cannot delete a substock item without removing its attribute ID but you can check the inactive checkbox for any created substock item to inactivate it. Make sure you click the save button in the toolbar at the top of the window when you are done entering any new item information to save it. If creating a new item of the serialized stock item or serialized assembly item classes, then click the serial numbers tab. If creating a new item not of the serialized stock item or serialized assembly item classes, then skip this tab. On this tab, to set warranty information for serialized stock if needed, check the This item is covered under a warranty checkbox in the warranty period section. To set when the warranty expires, enter a number into the spinner box and select a time increment from the drop down within the warranty expires blank from sale label in this section. In the future, you can look at this tab for this item to view the warranty and status information for the serialized merchandise you have bought and or sold. The list at the right side of the tab shows serial numbers of the items you have purchased within your purchasing forms. The serial numbers are entered within the purchasing forms at the time of purchase. To delete inventory items you have never used, excepting substock as previously mentioned, Open the Maintain Inventory Items window and select the item ID of the item to delete. Then click the Delete button in the Windows toolbar. You can only delete items that have not been used in transactions though. If you cannot delete the item, you can make it inactive instead, as noted at the beginning of this lesson. Like what you see? Pick up your free copy of the complete tutorial at www.teachucomp.com forward slash free.